Good afternoon, everyone. My name is uh, Sebastian Joik. I'm a senior software engineer at Cisco Systems, and in my part time, I'm also doing a PhD in cloud computing. The, the topic I'm presenting today is covering my research and showing how that can be applied to OpenStack and segmentation in the cloud. Okay, so I'll be discussing briefly what segmentation is and what problems we currently see with segmentation. I'll introduce my research, which is uh, universal cloud classification. I'll go over the uh, interface identifiers and then also pro uh, provide an overview of the actual architecture with UCC and IID. So what, what is segmentation? Segmentation has been around for quite some time with uh, VLANs and VXLANs and also GREs. All of these technologies hasn't been really introduced for solving cloud-specific issues. VLANs has been around for decades with uh, targeting, seg segmenting, and uh, separating departments and enterprises and not really the cloud-specific uh, entities. Um, so we, we have different protocols, and they, they're typically layer two segmentation, so we don't really have any layer three segmentations as well. And then also each is, uh, you can apply different policies on a per segment basis. So just to give a brief overview, this is a vanilla setup of uh, OpenStack. You have your different, different uh, controller, compute nodes, and also a network node, and the, the different traffic is segmented by VLANs. Each of the, the tenant networks and also the data networks they have their own VLANs, and then the switch and the virtual switch are usually configured with trunk, trunk ports to provide access to different VLANs. And then also the same thing if you look at the external connectivity that is typically introduced by a VLAN to get access to the external router uh, connectivity as well. Okay, so what, what do we see currently with uh, VLAN and VXLAN? What, what are the current limitations we have? With VLAN, you can see that there is a, the, the scale is very limited. You know, we only have 12 bits available to actually provide segmentation. Um, with VXLAN, we have a couple more bits available, but still it's relatively limited in terms of how it can be used. Both VLAN and VXLAN, um, the admin overhead is relatively high because you know, the physical network has to be configured for each VM that is spun up in a, in a VM or in a VLAN. So if you spin up a new VM in a compute node that doesn't have that VLAN configured yet, the, the physical network has to be configured properly so you can actually reach that VM and that VM can get access to the outside world. And then also with VLANs especially, they are usually limited to L2 domains. So if, if, you, do, if you go across an L3 domain, you, use, you lose a, a segmentation and you don't have that segmentation in the next uh, L3 domain anymore. So what, what I did in my, my research is focusing on how to actually identify tenants, services, and providers on the layer three in the network. Tenants here is not a project as we know it from OpenStack, but it's more of a consumer um, of a service. So the idea is to introduce an a extension header for IP version 6 that is 20 bytes, 22 bytes long. Um, we have four bytes for the, ten, uh, for the cloud ID, six bytes for the tenant, and six bytes for the service ID. And each of those IDs also has a length field and a flag field that can be used to define certain behaviors on route. The, the idea is what we propose is to use a hop-by-hop -hop extension header, which then can be used by all the devices in, on the route for a certain uh, inspection type. So if you want to do certain kind of uh, applications, network functions, you can use these IDs on layer three to actually apply, uh, let's say, quality of service, for example, for a specific tenant in a specific service. So as I, as I mentioned, we have uh, three IDs, uh, cloud ID, because it's, it identifies the cloud provider. It actually has to be globally unique, and there needs to be some kind of mechanism to actually manage these IDs globally. And the proposal we, we did is so, so something similar to DNS. So something that way where a cloud provider can register with, and is the service provides uh, an ID to that provider so that it's globally unique and centrally managed. The service ID and the tenant ID, they are managed by the provider itself, so they only have local 
um, significance. So if a, a new provider can reuse IDs, but with uh, the, the three IDs in a, in a pair, they make up a unique ID that can be used end to end for identification. Just just to give a brief overview, this is a typical IP version six header. I guess most of the fields are, are known. Just the, the new ones is a cloud ID, um, which is here four bytes long. And then you have also the, the service ID and the tenant ID. That would give you the, the required identifiers in that uh, IP version 6 packet that then can be used for certain applications. So at the moment, what we, what we currently have, um, we have two patents pending for that proposal. And we also have a couple of uh, research papers um, presented already at different academic and uh, industry um, conferences. So the, the next part of the proposal is the IID, which is an interface identifier, which is usually used by IP version 6 to provide globally unique um, IP addresses to an interface of a VM. It uses SLAC, which is a stateless uh, address auto configuration, and is based on the EUI64 format, which basically builds an IP address out of the MAC address so that it's unique to that particular interface. So now, similar to what we saw before with the VLAN, uh, instead of now having to configure all the different interfaces with as a trunk port, we don't really have to configure anything anymore because we don't rely on VLAN or VXLAN. So the, the configuration, there is no overhead in configuration anymore. We just use the, the ports as an untagged port, basically. There's no need to have any configuration for VMs if we spin up a new instance and a compute node. And the, another additional advantage is also that when we have the external network, because we get uh, globally unique um, IP addresses with uh, IIDs, we don't have to do any kind of uh, nutting anymore on the external network. So that is removed as well. Just uh, the traffic flow example between two compute nodes. Uh, so the, the first one is we use the UCC identifiers uh, on that service that runs on VM1, and we add that to the packet. So we have a tenant and a service pair for that particular cloud provider. Um, the VM then also adds the IID or uses the IID in, as an IP address. And the, the first uh, point who actually uses the IIDs can be the virtual switch, which can use the IIDs uh, to identify the flow, to identify the tenants, the service, and also to do some kind of authorization between the endpoints, because the, the IDs or the IPs are used uh, are unique between the endpoints. And then this is the same for both the physical switch. Here, both ingress, egress traffic, you can filter them, you can apply quality of services. Um, you can define certain forwarding uh, rules for certain ID pairs. And again, the same thing we have on the, on the destination side. The destination switch can also authorize uh, traffic, source traffic coming from a certain VM based on the IID UCC pair. And then on the, on the service on the other side, that is then stripped off and the service is behaving as normal uh, on a layer, layer 7. So as I mentioned already before, we think of a couple of use cases, uh, for example, quality of service, where you want to, let's say you want to um, prioritize traffic for a certain CEO, for example, video traffic for the CEO needs to be prioritized, and everything else, everyone else has a uh, lower priority. At the moment, this is relatively difficult to do because you can't really identify the tenant in the network as a particular tenant and you want to, to specify the uh, quality of service for that particular tenant, that's relatively difficult to do without uh, deep packet inspection, for example. Another thing uh, which we're currently looking into is internet routing of cloud data, where you want to do forwarding decisions within the internet to actually prioritize a data or cloud data traffic um, depending on certain criteria. Another thing is uh, billing, metering, and monitoring. At the moment, uh, let's say you have an interface on the switch, on a physical switch, and you want to see how much traffic is used by a certain service or by a certain tenant. That is relatively difficult to do because there is no distinguishment on the network layer itself between the different services and tenants. Um, security, as I said before, you can do some kind of authorization, basic authorization. You can apply a firewall service, a firewall rules um, to a specific tenant within a service, 
uh, you have more granularity than you have is just using IP addresses or port numbers or some kind of deep packet inspection. And then also some way of a federated identity. So just to give a brief summary, um, with the, with the research we have been doing, we, we try to tackle some of the limitations we see with VLANs and VXLANs. Um, one of the big advantages we think uh, is for of this proposal is that it eliminates the, uh, or that it provides an automatic um, configuration and fabric configuration, basically. So you don't have to configure the fabric all the time an instant moves or a new instant is spin up because there is no need to have a VLAN end-to-end -end configuration. Um, another important advantage is uh, with the IIDs, um, we don't have t the requirement for NUT. So there it's a NUTless configuration, so we can use these IIDs directly to access the global internet. Some of the things we think might be relevant to look into for optimization is, uh, at the moment, hardware types are, uh, hardware are usually optimized for a certain type of traffic. If you look at switches, they are optimized to provide best performance for layer 2 traffic. Routers usually provide best performance for layer 3 uh, traffic. So the, the idea is to propose um, the hardware that might be optimized to uh, operate with UCC and IID better than current hardwares are. And I guess another important point is that uh, at the moment everything is really based on, UC on, on VLANs and VXLANs. So everyone is familiar with these technologies. And it, it most likely will take some time to adapt to the new proposals uh, with UCC and IID to make them actually use uh, in service provider networks. Well, and I think that concludes my talk for today. Thank you very much.